It's where all the balls touch each other. Balls touching each other. Very nice formulation, Flemmy. Very nice. A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians. Way you come back to Navidad. So recently I came up with a fun little geometry problem, which has to do with um, optimal tiling. Maybe, I don't know. And also, for example, the stubble pendulum and ball bearings. You can find the stubble pendulum over on STEM merch, okay? As well as all the other merch presented here in the video. Um, and let me explain a tiny little bit and then we are going to dive into the meat of the video. So imagine, we have a circle with radius small r centered somewhere, okay, in the plane. And on the outside of the circle, we are going to enclose the circle with, let's say, small circles of radius small r. They are all the same size and we are going to enclose the inner circle with those. All of those circles need to touch each other. For example, for the case n being equal to 3, we get this. For the case n being equal to 4, we get this, n equal to 5, etc, etc. Now, what the goal of this video is, is to find out what the radius of the small circles are. Can we find a nice closed expression with as less information as possible for the radius of the small circles on the outside? Imagine a pizza, for example, or a cylinder enclosed by a pearl necklace where all the balls touch each other. Balls touching each other. Very nice formulation, Flemmy. Very nice. Okay, Papa, back on track. So, um, what does this have to do with, for example, um, those double pendulums. If we screw those double pendulums out, maybe with a bit of luck we are going to be able to see the ball bearings here. You see? Okay, ball bearings, just to make the model very easy to showcase, um, it's basically just a cylinder right in the middle, sitting in the middle, and on the outside we are going to stack balls once again. Like mentioned before, a cylinder with a pearl necklace where all balls and the cylinder touch each other around it. And if we take a look at the cross section, we are going to get the same situation I talked about before. Circle with radius small r in the middle being enclosed by smaller circles with radius big R on the outside. And yeah, we want to find out what the radius of the smaller circles actually is. And it's actually kind of easy to find out. It took me a tiny little bit of effort and time. It's not too hard, but, a, but some cool res results basically come with the evaluation of this problem. Also, video sponsored by NordVPN. More information at the end of the video. You can support the channel massively by checking out NordVPN. And now we are going to dive right in. Now, let me sketch some random arbitrary situation for which this could hold, okay? Um, we are going to have this circle in the middle. Oh, that's a very nice circle. Gotta, gotta um, give the props to me here. And then we are going to have small circles around it. Okay, so the inner circle has a middle point, same as the other circles. And now what we are going to do is we are going to slice this circle up. Okay, this inner circle, we are going to slice it up. And now here's the first train of thought that you could follow or should follow. Namely, if you want to place all of those small circles on the outside, they need to touch each other and they all have the same size. Meaning what is going to happen is the distances between uh, those touch points, basically, of those circles with the circle on the inside are always going to be the same. So this right here is some distance A. Then if we place the next one around it, if we let all of them touch, then this touch point is also going to be A apart from the next one. Meaning, if we continue this process, then what we are going to get, for example here in this situation, okay, let's, let's just um, try to get something done here, okay, this is just a sketch. What we are going to get overall is an octagon, okay? It has eight slices, it consists of eight pizza slices, you could say, but all of those are of equal size, meaning we're going to have a regular octagon. Meaning if we continue this process up until the nth iteration, n balls around it, we are going to have a regular n-gon, which is already the first cool fact. And now what we are going to do is we are going to find out what the radius right here is, the radius capital R. And like mentioned before, okay, radius capital R is this, and this right here has a small radius R. 
Also, we want to expand this idea a bit and say, okay, we are going to expand this line too, which is the radius small r, into here. By definition, since this right here is a tangent line, I mean, this is the touch point and the touch point from the outer part, from the arc of the circle is going to run to the center. It's also going to be the radius capital R yet again. Meaning, on the one hand, what we are going to have is we are going to have always a triangle on the inside here, which is R, R and A. But more importantly, we got another triangle. If we now connect up the centers right here, then Ah, this is cool, right? I mean, we are going to partition those small circles up too, which is actually kind of a cool fact. And what we are going to have here is once again the radius. I mean, it's a point from the, um, it's a line from the middle point, from the center to the outer arc of the circle. It's bound to be the radius capital R yet again. So meaning we also have this triangle right here. I mean, what is the side length here? This is the small radius plus the other radius, so R plus R. This is an isosceles triangle, which is also a really cool fact, R plus R. And what we have down here is R plus R, which is nothing but 2R. Ah, cool. So we, we found two triangles and now we can actually proceed to find out what capital R is. And it's not actually too hard. For this, I would like to go a step further and use trigonometric functions basically. And in our case it's going to be the sine function because what I found out in the process of evaluating this problem is what the side length of, so the side length A of every um, regular n-gon is, which I didn't know before. I, I figured it, it has a formula, it must have a formula, I mean it's elementary geometry, <laughs> most of the stuff has a formula, but I didn't know that um, it was of the form like it is. So, so at first we are going to take a look at this triangle yet again. And now we are going to suppose that we are going to cut this, um, this n gone up into n equal pieces, equally sized pieces. Meaning the angle up here in the sharp corner is always going to be the same on each and every triangle. I mean, it, it's a regular n gone. This is just a property, okay? Meaning this right here has an angle of, let's say, 10 degrees. Then this is 10 degrees, this is 10 degrees, etc. How can we put this relationship with n sides of an angon into more mathematical terms? I mean, let's say this right here is an angle alpha. Okay? How can we express the angle alpha? What even is one rotation in radians, for example? What is one rotation? in degrees, radians, etc. I mean one full rotation is 360 degrees, meaning this is kind of a part of 2 pi. But what is it exactly? I mean we are, uh, we are slicing this up into 2, 4, 6, 8 equal pieces. I mean then one part is just 360 degrees divided by 8 for example. This could be one part, meaning um, 45 degrees, no, yeah 45 degrees something, I don't care. Meaning if we have n sides, a regular n gone, we are going to get 2 pi over n overall as being the angle alpha that we are having up here. And since those two triangles are basically similar because we are just scaling up those side lengths by some certain factor, we also have the angle alpha up here. And now what we can do is we can actually find out what for example the side length a right here is. This is just a little matter of fact for the side length of any all regular n gone. And I found this information too on Wikipedia after checking which is really cool that I found this out. So what we are going to do is we are going to slice this up a tiny bit. What we are going to do is we are going to set a height on our side length a. Meaning this side length is going to be just a over 2. This right here is a height that we don't care about. This right here is alpha over 2 because we are slicing it up in the middle. It's nice source this triangle. We are going to make it half of the angle, meaning alpha over 2 is hence nothing but 2 pi over 2n, which is nothing but pi over n. Okay, so we got pi over n as the angle here. And what is this side length r? Meaning well, this is kind of easy to find out. This right here is a right triangle since this right here was the height on our side length A. Leaving us overall with the sine of pi divided by n being hence nothing but okay we are going to get A over 2R. Okay, Just um, opposite over hypotenuse. And now we are going to multiply both sides by 2R. Leaving us with A being hence nothing but 2R 
times the sine of pi over n. And this is how you can express the side length of every all um, regular n gone, which is kind of cool if you ask me. Um, you can try it out for n being equal to 2, 3, 4, 5, I don't care, it's actually pretty nice. Um, no, 2 doesn't work out, this is for <laughs> greater than uh, greater or equal to 3 of, of side lengths, obviously. There doesn't exist a 2 gone, I think. Um, okay, next up we are going to just use this method that we just now used on this triangle right here. Meaning we are going to put a height into here, turning this triangle into this one. We have a right angle right here. One part of the side length is just r. And now we are going to have r plus r. And over here we are going to have pi over n yet again. And now once again we are going to have the same relationship once again. What we had just now was that the sine of pi over n is hence nothing but opposite over our hypotenuse. Now we are going to multiply both sides by r plus r under the condition that's not equal to zero. Both are defined positive, so they are not zero. Okay, otherwise we wouldn't have this problem if they were zero both. Okay, then we are going to have r sine of pi over n plus, and now we are going to get capital R times the sine of pi over n is hence nothing but capital R. And now we are going to solve this equation for capital R and then we are basically done. Meaning what we are going to do is we are going to subtract R times the sine of pi n on both sides, leaving us with, okay, we are going to get R minus R times sine pi n. We are going to factor out capital R, one minus sine pi over n. Sends nothing but small r times the sine of pi over n. And this is going to result in r being hence nothing but r times the sine of pi over n divided by 1 minus the sine of pi over n. And this is how you can express the radius of the outer circuit with respect to just the number of circuits that you want to put around it basically. And also our small r, our radius that should be a given in this problem. And I think that's pretty cool that you can find such a spicy formula for that. And you're going to notice that for n being equal to 2, so for a 2 gone basically, everything is going to diverge because we're going to have the sine of pi over 2 down here. Sine of pi over 2 is going to give us 1, 1 minus 1 is going to go to infinity if we have it in the denominator. Meaning everything is going to diverge, meaning we would need circles of infinite radius to uh, um, basically put those two around an inner circle. And yeah, this basically concludes the video. But before we actually end the video, don't forget to check out today's sponsor, NordVPN, who were kind enough to sponsor their first episode here on this channel. So recently I had a situation yet again that I wanted to download multiple files from a file uploader like um, uploaded.to for example. And in the normal case you are not able to download multiple files one after another. You have to wait for a while to download them. But with a VPN like NordVPN I'm going to be able to switch my location after downloading the first file, making a new download slot available for my computer. It comes in extremely handy and I really like to use VPNs. They make your connection really secure. You can log into other networks while being on a trip for example and your connection is going to be very nicely secured by the VPN and it's just an overall good experience. With the over 5000 servers all across the world in 60 different countries you can log into each and every location you would like like Australia or the UK and start downloading files from there for example or if you don't want to download files you can also stream in other locations. I can remember for example Hulu didn't allow people in Canada to watch their stuff but with a VPN you can actually change your location to for example the USA to watch videos on Hulu. And what I do really like about NordVPN is the fact that they are seriously private, so they do not engage in any kind of data logging, meaning they are not going to store up your personal data once you enter one of their servers. Also, their software is available for basically each and every operating system that you could think of, Windows, iOS, Mac, Android, and also Linux. So it really doesn't matter where you want to use NordVPN, you can do it wherever you wish. If this feels like a something for you, make sure to check out the link at the top of the description, nordvpn.com slash flamblemass or just use the code flamblemass at checkout to get one additional month for free on the two year plan plus a huge discount on the whole thing, which is a great deal if you ask me. VPNs 
make your connection really secure and, and it's just a cool thing to have. I'm also using it on my PC if I access a private network, if I'm at McDonald's or whatever, for example, or at my university I was always using a VPN or to download PDFs <laughs> on some uh, website that I couldn't access in a normal case. So yeah, this is just a little cheater trick. So try it out and support the channel this way. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, become a channel, if you like everyone, support the channel, a bit more about the channel, Patreon, I'll see you guys. Day. Ciao!